Okay. Or, or, or I won't even say the guy's name. He had a TV show. He used to attack everybody with them big teeth. Yeah, probably, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to be back with uh, in a couple minutes with the news. And then we're going to get uh, our first guest on, Jason Offit, uh, talking about creatures all over the country. So stay tuned to Night Dream Stock Radio After Dark. And with me, Gary. You enter a realm of spirit, of sight and sound and mind. Your radio is a cosmic doorway and your psyche begins to spark. When you tune in to Gary and the sun and night dreams after dark. Talk Radio Network brings you the World Paranormal News with James Creechbaum. Now, the latest news. I'm James Creechbaum with the Paranormal and World Changes News. China's huge alien hunting radio telescope is finishing its testing phase. The 500-meter aperture spherical telescope has hit the ground running. And also... China's a giant alien hunting radio telescope has finished its testing and commissioning phase, which has occurred over the past three years. Now, hopefully, if, if they would find something that we're not going to hear all kinds of excuses, and hopefully they can uh, repeat the process with other telescopes across the world. That would be something else. Huge UFO seen by hundreds of witnesses over California as bizarre video emerges. It's all, all over the place. You can look it up. The craft reportedly remains silent as it hovered above the Californian town of Menifee, and many have rolled out drones due to them appearing 2,000 feet or higher in the sky. Like I say, the Internet was flooded with these. It's a pretty fascinating picture. Again, the jury's still out on what it is, but it was a sighting recently, and that was in California. Also, a ghost hunter claims he physically has captured a poltergeist. Yes, I know. Now, paranormal investigator, he claims he captured a violent poltergeist and is holding it in an electromagnetic chamber, which he calls Parabot Containment Chamber. Uh, recently, he, had, he was investigating, and there was a, it was an asylum, and there was all kind of poltergeist activity. So with this, he 
well, reportedly has captured this poltergeist. Oh, boy. Now, scientists have found that plants scream when stressed out. That's what their study has found. Scientists have discovered that plants emit ultrasonic squeals when stressed due to drought or damage. Now, what, what sound does a plant make? Well, it's a question that might seem ridiculous, but now, according to the new study, the idea of plants emit sound may not be too far-fetched after all. Uh, also, so far in 2019, in the state of Illinois, there's been 133 UFO sightings. And there's still a little less than a month left, so I'm sure that figure will probably go up. Um, Texas. Texas become, also has become a hot spot with hundreds of sightings, including snake-like objects. Uh, again, it, I don't know what's going on with the snake-like objects and the cigar objects, but though the uh, reports of those have kind of went up. Uh, UFO research, research said mystery objects are seen almost every day in the deep south state. U.S. state of Texas has become a hotspot of UFO sightings with hundreds seen this year alone, the re researcher has claimed. And I'm sure there will be more sightings as we go along. Also, Venus and Saturn will kiss in a rare astronomical event this week. If you're looking out, you will see uh, the evening star and the ring planet will be close to each other in the southwest sky after sunset. And it will look like they are kissing. So on a clear night, you can, you, you can actually see this Venus and Saturn coming close enough together where it looks like they're kissing. Next news break, top of the hour. You can advertise your business on Night Dreams Talk Radio, and you will be heard worldwide. Why not contact us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com, and thank you. Good evening, or morning, depending on your time zone. From the Pacific to the Atlantic to you worldwide. Get yourself a cup of java and find a comfy, easy chair. And get ready for Gary and his guest on Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. And now... Here's Gary. And here I am. I'll tell you tonight, we have a great show. Let's get a hold of our first guest right now. Uh, we have Jason Offit that wrote, well, The American uh, uh, Monsters. i tell you what, it's a great book, a good read, and he is a great guest. So let's get him on. Hi, Jason, my friend. It's been a while since you've been on Night Dreams Talk Radio. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you on this wonderful evening? I am doing so much better. Hey, question. What have you been hearing about Mothman? It, it seems to be a big, big surge on reports about Mothman. And it's gone crazy the last couple months. Um, really? Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to be any help whatsoever on that. I have not... Uh... I haven't been up to date on, on Mothman. Well, well, James, why don't you tell him a little bit, and then we'll get into about all his, re, you know, <laughs> reports uh, in his book, you know, by state by state. We won't cover every state tonight, but we'll cover a lot. Well, there's been a lot, I mean, a lot of sightings in the Chicago, Rosemont, O'Hara uh, airport area. Um, there was a truck driver. He came out just to smoke a cigarette on dock while they're loading his truck. He notices off in the distance there at the edge of a field in the wood line. Uh, he looks like a wing, wing humanoid. And, and for a better word, that's what he saw. So, and that was one sighting. Another sighting, a couple was uh, in the same area, and uh, they heard a noise sound like a woman screaming for godly murder. They looked straight up, and there flying above them was, for lack of a better word, a moth man, a humanoid uh, winged being flying above them now that sighting alone with that shriek would be enough to send the hair up your your back and that was just one sighting. there was actually six sightings last week alone in that area over 48 hour period so there's definitely something going on in the chicago rosemont area 
Uh, for sure. And that was just two out of the six, and there's been so many others. And there's also been these pterodactyl sightings, which I don't know if those kind of fall into the humanoid type thing because they, they look like kind of humanoid and some are not. Um, there's a lot going on with flying uh, humanoid beings, Mothman type. They're all kind of in one class, but they're really on the spike. Well, when it comes, yeah, when it comes to the, the Chicago area, there have been sightings. Uh, the last time I was up to date on a number, uh, it's probably been about a year ago and there were, uh, there were about 80 sightings in the last few years around the Chicago area of a mothman like creature. Uh, so I'm sure the, uh, the, the number has gone up. Um, uh, yeah, the, the, the one thing about those that has been really, really bizarre to me is it tends that tends to be, uh, sightings of a mothman like creature, um, uh, always, are before some form of disaster in uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, in uh, 1967, when when this term was coined, uh, it was the Silver Bridge collapse that was you know happened right after the Mothman sightings. Uh, there was a bridge collapse in, uh, in in Minneapolis that there was a Mothman sighting, and, and there was a bridge collapse there. There was a Mothman type creature seen. Uh, before the, the Chernobyl disaster a number of times. So wh- the, the thing that fascinates me about this is there have been so many in the Chicago area that, and, and, and you know, nothing, nothing huge like that, no kind of disaster like that has happened there. Um, so if it's going to follow the same pattern, I want, wonder what's, I mean, I'm, no offense to Chicago listeners, but I'm glad I don't live there. I would be scared too with all those type of reports and stuff like that. You know, also, I mean, Chicago is a great place. I love Chicago, but uh, yeah, it, something might be percolating. Uh, and not just there, but there's reports. that was one on in Oregon here several weeks ago, and there's reports on a record basis coming out of Texas. So, I mean, whatever these uh, you know cryptics are, they're being seen not just in Chicago; they're being seen all around the country. I had a report one trucker, you know, back here, maybe a month or so ago, uh, emailed me and said he was, you know, doing his job, you know, driving the truck late at night. He looks out of his window, side window, and he sees a cryptic, uh, you know, something like, remember Jeeper Creepers monster? Yeah, yeah, sure do. Yeah, he said it was flying right next to his his, uh, uh, side of his truck, and then it just took off. And he said that was enough to scare you know what out of him. Well, uh, yeah, I would, I would think so. The, um, the, the one thing about, uh, the Mothman sightings and, and, and other, not just cryptid, but other entity, uh, entity sightings is that they come and go. Um, Bigfoot is a constant people, people see Bigfoot everywhere all the, all the time. But, um, but, but like Mothman, um, the, um, you know the Loveland Frog, the uh, um, you know di- different different creatures like that. There's a, there's a red demon in Detroit. Now, um, what's the red demon? Can you explain that to the listeners? Right, it's um, back uh, when the French controlled the uh, the, the territory. Uh, the local uh, the local uh, Native American tribes. Uh, had a, had a story of the uh, of this this red uh, red devil. It was. Uh, uh, a, a short humanoid type uh, type figure, and it was seen as a protector. And the uh, French and, and British had had battled um, for for Detroit. I'm not sure why, <laughs> but the, the area was really uh, you know it was, was was really considered. No offense to Detroit, I'm not making people mad all over the place, but um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the British and the French. Battle and there was a um, uh, the the battle was so bloody that the uh, the local river was said to have uh, run red for for three or four days afterward. Um, but the demon was seen dancing across the battlefield and and ever, ever since then um, it is occasionally seen in the city or around the city right before something bad happens. It would be a uh, a riot or I think the last time it was. It was seen was in the in the 1970s before a, uh, a big blizzard, um, you know, it killed killed a number of people. Um, but it has gone from from being the uh, 
the Native American protector to, um, you know, something that's like Mothman that, um, uh, you know, 